Hi, welcome to Numeric's video blog. I'm your host, Jim Jockel. As we're quickly closing the books on 2015, 2016 promises more cost. And that cost is directly impacted by two elements in the market. First is the introduction of certain deadlines as it relates to FRTB uh, under Basel III rules. And the second is the introduction of is the SIM methodology, uh, for, uh, which is margin for non-clear derivatives. Um, interestingly, just before Thanksgiving here in the United States, uh, uh, Basel just put out its interim impact study uh, looking at some of the impact effects on FRTB and the report had concluded that uh, we'll definitely be seeing something of a minimum 4.7 percent in capital over the additional Basel III capital uh, rules that have been rolled out into the banking book. Joining me to dis today to discuss some of those regulatory changes uh, that have been enacted over the past uh, uh, few months is Dr. Sergei Isakov, Head of Quantitative Research and Development at Numeric. Sergei, welcome. Thank you, Jim. Perhaps you can give us a little bit of an update of some of the changes that were enacted um, and proposed into the market uh, during the summer months. Okay. Uh, during the summer, uh, Basel Committee issued a new regu regulation, which is a substantial upgrade of the existing CVA capital regulation. And uh, it, that regulation, it's uh, an update, it's uh, aligned with FRTB approach, as you said. Uh, so Basel proposed one approach, which is a generalization of the standardized uh, Basel III capital calculation for the banks that currently use this approach. And uh, uh, the change was to account for uh, market fluctuation and exposures. The original Basel III CVA capital calculation accounted only on uh, fluctuations in credit spreads for counterparty when computing CVA VAR, which is uh, the quantity on which the capital is based, CVA capital is based. Now, they basically under pressure from banks Banks normally do account also for uh, fluctuations in exposures. They added this requirement to account for those fluctuations in calculation of the capital, CVA capital. And uh, that's one part of this proposal. And also they uh, issued the so-called FRTB CVA framework where they aligned the calculation of uh, CVA capital with the FRTB sensitivities and FRTB shocks defined FRTB approach to market data. So now it's interesting to know that FRTB framework is, serves as a, as a unifying framework for different uh, approaches to capital, to calculation of regulatory capital. So Sir, Sergey, let me ask you uh, a, a quantitative question. Um, I don't know if I'll understand the answer, but uh, you know, one of the things now we're, we continue to see different dislocations in the market, right? And you know, we're seeing changes in credit spreads in terms of synthetic credit, um, you know, widening out over cash credit. Um, you know, we're seeing more and more volatility and things of that nature. I mean, a lot of the regulation as it was developed, especially in the terms of quantitative finance, is assuming stable, predictable markets. Yet, right now, when you start seeing different volatility swings and things of that nature, you know, how does that impact some of these calculations? So, you know, if, assuming all things were equal in terms of, of credit spreads, but yet you see a market dislocation, how is that going to disrupt some of, the, uh, some of, the, some of these models? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, de definitely the models will have to be adapted to, to, to be able to handle large, say, volatility changes, volatility spikes, and different volatility regimes. But that's what uh, Quants had, had been working, uh, well, all, all the time when such, such regimes do occur in the market. Definitely uh, high, uh, well, increasing credit spreads would increase the, the capital charges. Yes, but that's basically we, how we can just react and uh, account for, for those fluctuations in the market. Very good. Okay, thank you. And so uh, just turning over to uh, some of the, the SIM uh, methodology, what are some of the challenges that people are thinking about as they're, they're looking to implement this? Well, the SIM methodology, uh, which was issued, issued by ISDA, it's a, a model, standardized initial model for initial margin. It, it's a, it looks like that it's going to be accepted in all regions of the world. And uh, the Methodology is pretty simple in the sense that if you are able to compute um, sensitivities according to a FRTB basically approach, then the rest is, uh, is pretty straightforward. But the correct computation of those sensitivities is, is a real challenge. You have to be able to, to compute them well in, a, in, a, in an accurate way. 
And this is where models, uh, in fact, uh, front office models are be become more important for computation of those sensitivities. And obviously this will ultimately lead into the introduction of, of the MVA, the, the margin vary uh, valuation adjustment. You know, perhaps uh, what should people be thinking about as they um, are incorporating uh, the concepts of MVA into their total workflow? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. MVA is similar to KVA, which is the cost of your capital uh, throughout the life of your portfolio, your trades. For margin, if when margin uh, requirements are applied, you have to, to, to be able to compute your margin requirements across, again throughout the life of your portfolio. And uh, well, based on the approaches for margin calculation itself, you can simulate uh, the calculation, you can simulate the uh, MVA. Well, MVA is the cost of, cost of margin. Mm -hmm. And well, it's, uh, the methodology is uh, similar to calculation of KVA. So in fact, uh, you can say also even for uh, MVA based on uh, initial margin for bilateral trading. Mathematically, it's very similar to KVA for market risk capital. Mathematically, it's almost pretty, almost identical, in fact. So if you know how to compute one, you know how com to compute the other. Well, finally, something uh, easy in the world of quantitative finance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sergey, I want to thank you so much for joining us. And of course, stay on top of all the things uh, uh, that Numerics is putting into the marketplace and, and look for our new uh, paper on FRTB that will be available on numerics.com. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, Jim. And we'll see you next time.